Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for joining and for inviting me. My name is Alexander Tsiplikin. I'm leading the AI engineering team in the US at GraphCore. And today I will be talking about some trends and challenges in AI models and algorithms and how we at GraphCore address them. So as a very quick introduction, here's a little about us. Uh, GraphCore develops processors and compute systems specifically designed for AI and machine learning workloads. We provide hardware technology as the IPU processor and software as the Poplar software and development tools as a part of a complete solution to enable innovators to solve current and future ML problems. We had announced our Mark II second generation processor delivered in the IPU M2000 product and IPU pod rack scale products, which provide scalable deployments from small numbers that you can ramp up to tens of thousands of systems. And so I will be talking more about that later in, in this talk. Um, some of the observations and trends in AI models are shown on this slide. We are seeing that the rate of innovation in AI models and, and algorithms remains high. So we need to adapt quickly. We need something very flexible for that. Terascale models will be necessary for superhuman AI. Um, as far as I remember, a human would have approximately 200 trillion weights of model parameters like in, in our brains. So to automate, uh, human level tasks. We need to have model of a similar scale probably. And sparsity will be key to make those Terra scale models economically viable. Also efficient scale out systems are critical for Terra scale models to train those. And of course, maturity of software tools will govern hardware adoption. Um, for example, efficient cluster management, job orchestration, and uh, automated model decomposition. And finally, uh, there appears to be no uh, one size fits all kind of solution for the compute ratio between the general purpose or CPU compute to specialized accelerated AI compute. Uh, what I mean by this is that for computer vision tasks, for example, you need more CPU compute to pre-process images, do data augmentation. Uh, and for NLP, for example, not that much of CPU compute. So you need to have this flexibility between um, how many CPUs you attach to one AI accelerator. So these are some of the things we want to see in a future proof system to train AI models. In terms of the model parameter growth, about a year and a half ago, OpenAI has introduced their GPT-3 model, which had um, 175, 175 billion parameters. And the growth uh, was huge from the previous models. Now, more recently, this year, Google has introduced a model, Switch C, with 1.6 trillion of model parameters. So this growth continues and uh, researchers have found that it is more efficient to train a large model for a shorter period of time versus training a, a smaller model for a very long period of time. You get higher accuracy with a large model. So this trend will likely continue as shown. But in order to train terascale models, you need a lot of compute. And uh, the relationship is shown on this slide. For example, to train a human, potentially human level model with 100, 200 trillion parameters, just to process one sequence and do one gradient step with uh, one phrase, one paragraph of text, one would need about 3.5 exaflops of compute. And exa meaning 10 to the power of 18 operations. So it's a huge amount of compute. It will, it will take a lot of dollars to train these models. So scaling 
dense models further up is not sustainable and we need novel sparse paradigms to move forward. Some of the system design considerations are as follows. We will need a lot of memory capacity to, to hold model and model state, optimizer state and activations. And it is just as important as compute to train uh, a large model. We need networking, which is efficient and scalable to leverage this exascale AI compute. Performant and durable storage is necessary for checkpoint management and data set management. Then the ratio of general purpose host compute to accelerator compute will vary or should be able to vary uh, based on the use case, as I have uh, mentioned earlier, computer vision versus NLP, for example. And finally, software tooling to manage scale is just as critical. Job orchestration, especially in multi-tenant environments, would be an example here. So uh, now let me talk about how GraphCore resolves, uh, addresses these uh, problems and challenges. And I will start with the smallest piece the processor itself. Advanced machine learning models require two kinds of compute innovation for a processor, high level of parallelism and much more memory bandwidth to move the data to the compute from the memory. So GraphCore has implemented these innovations in the IPU, which stands for Intelligence Processor Unit. In terms of parallelism, CPUs have been, uh, have been built for scalar processes, GPUs employ single instruction multiple thread architecture. So they apply the same operation to large vectors of dense contiguous data. And IPUs follow multiple instruction, multiple data paradigm. So much more flexible. Um, and in terms of machine learning, that would mean that we can ex extract much more parallelism even uh, for small batches. We do not need large batches to uh, be efficient. For example, we can achieve much lower latency for inference at batch size one, or we can train for a fewer number of, for a smaller number of iterations uh, because of going with a smaller batch. So in addition to this fine grain parallelism, we have a different paradigm of memory access. On the CPU memory is um, located put off the chip and it's relatively expensive to move data between the memory and the compute. On GPUs, we have HBM, high bandwidth memory on the same silicon interposer. So it's uh, more efficient and the bandwidth between the memory compute is higher. There is also a uh, limited amount of SRAM right there on the die. So it's relatively more efficient. And then on IPU, we have um, uh, distributed the memory across the chip so that every core is tightly coupled with local and private SRAM for that core. And that helped us maximize the bandwidth between the compute and the memory. So it's much, much more efficient versus GPU, for example. This is a high level floor plan of the IPU. We have 1,472 independent cores running almost 9,000 independent threads in parallel, delivering this finer grain parallelism. We have 900 megabytes of SRAM, a huge amount <clears throat> of very fast SRAM, the data bandwidth between the compute and the memory is over 47 terabytes per second. So every core shown in red has memory, which is local and private to that core. The cores can communicate with each other using the IPU exchange. And we employ what's called bulk synchronous paradigm by bulk synchronous, synchronous parallel paradigm on the processor. So similar to MapReduce at the cluster level, but now squeezed into a processor. Um, and IPU exchange delivers eight terabytes per second of non-blocking all-to-all communication. We have 
IPU links for external connectivity, connecting multiple processors together to form larger uh, scale out accelerators. And then PCIe uh, based interface is used to connect to the host systems. This is our second generation processor. We call it Mark II IPU. And we put four of these Mark II IPUs in one IPU machine, IPU M2000. Uh, so each of the Mark II IPUs delivers 250 uh, teraflops of peak performance. And one M2000 is one petaflop of half precision compute at peak. It has um, almost 5,900 independent cores on the IPUs. We can put up to 448 gigabytes of DRAM to complement the SRAM that we have in the IPUs, which is 3.6 gigabytes. On this picture, you would see the four IPUs shown here with a large heatsink, the gateway chip, which helps uh, IPUs communicate with the whole system, for example, and with the memory, which is uh, shown here, the DRAM. And some IPU links that I have mentioned from the previous slide, connecting the adjacent M2000 machines in pods. And some of the network uh, bandwidths are shown on this slide. So the host link is an ethernet link for a desegregated configuration to connect to popular servers, to the CPU-based servers. If we look inside of an M2000, we will see the four IPUs connected with IPU links shown in red, gateway chip connecting to the um, RNIC card and the memory and the IPUs. And the connections, IPU links going out of each M2000 as well as the gateway links that help us do large all reduce kind of operations, data parallel training operations to train large models across several racks. Uh, this is a configuration that we call IPU pod 64. So we have 64 IPUs or 16 M2000s all connected with IPU links uh, with using this Torus topology, which is optimal for uh, the collective operations used for data parallel model training, for example. And uh, this is a building block for larger scale out systems. As I had mentioned before, we employ this disaggregated um, approach to building scale out systems. We can vary the number of hosts connected via this uh, data center network to the pods so that for larger, for more CPU heavy workloads, you can attach more CPU based servers to the system. And storage is or can be connected to the same data center network. GraphCore products uh, product line includes a series of scale out solutions. You can start, for example, with just one IPU M2000 with one petaflop of compute, and then easily scale to four IPU machines. And we call this configuration IPU pod 16, since it's, it has 16 uh, Mark II IPUs connected together with IPU links. Um, you can target a pod 16 from TensorFlow PyTorch as one accelerator running data parallel or modal parallel. The larger unit is pod 64, and you can scale further to thousands of IPUs as shown on this slide. The scaling efficiency is uh, shown on this slide. For example, uh, ResNet 50 training in this case, we can scale from pod 16 to, to pod 256. The overall scaling efficiency from 16 to 256 would be around 75%. And every uh, doubling of IPUs is achieved at an efficiency, with an efficiency of approximately 93%. And this jump is 4x, actually, it's not 2x. So it's twice uh, 93%. So the scaling efficiency is really good. 
multi-tenancy is supported as shown on this slide. You can slice part 64 and um, use it uh, for multiple tenants as shown at the number under number one here or one part 64 can be used by a single tenant or even a single tenant can occupy occupy multi host um, part 128 in this case so these are two part 64s connected together with uh, gateway links and there would be uh, several two or more host servers that will run uh, Kubernetes uh, in this example. So we have a lot of flexibility with this. And this is all enabled by the popular SDK, popular stack, which is a com complete software stack uh, implementing our graph tool chain. Popular allows one to use existing high-level machine learning frameworks such as TensorFlow, Onyx, or PyTorch. And you can easily target your existing models to the IPU, even if they were originally developed for a CPU or GPU. And this enables maximum portability and ease of use for out of the box performance. To complement the popular software, we have comprehensive virtualization and workload management support. Uh, we support for standard workload managers like Slurm and orchestration systems like Kubernetes and open BMC management built in. With this, we can integrate into any data center converged infrastructure management system and interface to system monitoring tools like Grafana. And finally, Pop Vision tools allow users to visualize and optimize their machine intelligence, intelligence workloads running across multiple IPUs. We have a very good developer portal, which uh, allows users to get started really quickly and easily from byte uh, sized how to videos to more detailed walkthroughs and tutorials, very in depth documentation, webinar recordings, code examples, performance benchmarks, research papers, and news. So this is an open for all portal that can answer uh, almost all of user questions. And, and as an example, in terms of the efficiency of the IPUs, I want to bring up this efficient net before training. Uh, efficient net is an architecture that has been very popular for the last maybe three years. In the image net contest, for example, uh, over 40 top uh, 40 models out of top 50 were based on depth-wise separable convolutions like EfficientNet. And for EfficientNet, on an IPU-based system, we can deliver over 4x, 4.3x price performance advantage versus uh, DGXA100, as an example. And these are official numbers by, by NVIDIA. So as a summary, I want to... Uh, highlight that I have discussed that the IPU fine-grained parallelism unlocks a new paradigm for emerging, emerging AI research and efficient net before is an example of such finer grain uh, kernel depth-wise separable convolution which benefits from the finer grain IPU architecture. IPU pod systems offer an elastically scalable and cost effective hyperscale AI compute option. And finally, IPUs offer a powerful platform that fosters innovation in the age of trillion parameter AI models at lower total cost of ownership. With that, I want to invite everybody to come innovate with us. This is all from me for today. Thank you very much for joining this talk. Please stay in touch. I'm happy to answer any questions now or later over email feel free to follow us on twitter and on linkedin we're also on facebook and we are actively hiring for our engineering roles in the us so let me know if you know someone who might be interested thank you